and, and one thing that I think is, is, is excellent with your writing, um, I won't tell anything. It, it, <laughs> I, 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 I know it sounds like I'm just flattering you all the time, but I, I, I like that um, um, you have this sort of serious, this serious adventure, but, but when it comes to details, uh, you, you have a um, that you have very drastic uh, ways to to, to, to to express these details when st stuff uh, when, you, when, you, when stuff is happening you know, with, with Jacob. So it's a sort of um, uh, I think Shakespeare was the first one. It's both, both it's, it's, there is some some funny stuff also that you, in, in the book once in a while. Uh, I, th I think that was very ex excellent. Uh, that was also funny uh, once in a while. Thanks. I'm a pretty silly person. <laughs> because, because, I am. Because, because it would be the press of the darkness. <laughs> um, and this um, this magic world is, is very 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 persuasive, and um, there, there's a flow, a cinematic flow, and it's it's, ex it's excellent that this uh, book also will probably um, knock on board. Uh, be, be filmed, and uh, Steve Bolton who probably will, will, no, not probably. But if someone will film it, it will be him, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would he would he be your first choice to, to film this book, Tim Burton? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That would be great. <laughs> it's so crazy that that's happening be, because the book is, is sort of it seems really perfect. It, it, the book it seems like a perfect book to be filmed by Tim Burton. Yeah, uh, it's a quirky story. Um, I, I made a book trailer yeah. for Miss Peregrine um, that I filmed myself, and actually this is before any of the movie stuff happened, and I used the music, like the theme song from um, Edward Scissorhands, one of Tim Burton's movies, so oh. it was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, uh, you know, if, uh, like I refer to Edward Gorey a little bit, and Tim Burton clearly loves Edward Gorey too, and did a whole book called The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy. <laughs> Which is just like homage to Gory, basically. Oh yeah, it's a uh, lot, lot of lot, lots of uh, loves and uh, death. <laughs> lots of silly death. Or something. But so he's, you know, uh, you know, alienated weirdo. Oh yeah. <laughs> which is pretty much all his movies. Yes. Um, and um, the, 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 this 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 book um, it will be followed up uh, quite soon. Uh, the next one. To, this will be a sequel. So. Uh, next year. Next year, but yeah. that, that's soon enough for, for me. Pretty soon. Yeah. No. Um, maybe late next year. Still. <laughs> hey, okay. You're not still finished. marinating You're not finished. inside yeah. of my laptop. Yeah. But yeah, I'm writing a sequel, um, and it takes place right where the first book leaves off, and goes places I can't tell you because it might still change, no. um, and that wouldn't be fun anyway to spoil it. So, working on the second book, and um, uh, wish me luck. <laughs> the, the second book did it, it, it come easy because it, it says uh, somewhere in the. End of the book. It says, at, the, at, the, at least in the Swedish edition, it says that um, that you said that oh, I have lots of photos. I have lots of sto more stories to tell about this, mm -hmm. this the, the adventures of Jacob. Is that? Uh, but you just had to keep on doing. You have more stories that are waiting. Wait, so is, was the second book easy? Is it easy? No, not no. easy. But not, <laughs> not, not easy. But you had to write it. You had the story sort of waiting for you. No, no. Mm -mm. I have lots of photos, but you could. Go, there's so many of them that I could have gone anywhere with the story, anywhere. And at the end of the book, you get to the end of the book, and you'll see that like this that story could go anywhere too. So I feel like I've I've sort of explored every possible option of where the story could go, and now yeah. I know what it is. Mm -hmm. But I had to tell all the wrong stories before I found the right one. And and, and it's um, oh wait, I, 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 I almost uh, spoiled the story. I, I won't tell. I almost tell the total, total spoil, spoiler now, but I won't do that. Um, I think that, that, that one thing that is very strong in the book uh, is that, that the, the characters, you have sympathy for the characters, uh, Jacob and all the others, uh, and the, they are not polished, but the, the, you, you, you have a very true tone. It's not sort of, um, um, what shall I say, it's, 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 it's very genuine, your, your warmth and the, the feeling that you have for your characters in the story. Is that, uh, did you almost hear them start talking with you, or uh, did, they, did they get a life of their own, like some uh, authors say, or...? Um, sometimes, sometimes you hear the characters talking, I guess. Uh, yeah. I don't know, I feel like it was interesting to come from a film background and start writing fiction, because it's almost like I, I'm acting out the scenes 
you know, in front of the keyboard and mouthing the words and stuff and and writing in, you know, acting beats like he moves his coffee cup and then he spoke or something. And something about, you know, having directed actors and scenes and stuff helps with the flow of these characters. And I think it makes the words come easier. And now, now when you're working with different uh, scenarios, can it be sometimes that you feel that you have a story and, and, and then you, you have start a, a long walk and then you say, oh, I can't do that. And you start to walk another way, another stroll uh, and, and mm -hmm. you have to cancel lots of Oh, yeah, uh, all the time. All the time, yeah. yeah. That sort of thing, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. If I knew, if, yeah, I would have written like four books by now if I, <laughs> if I knew exactly where I was going to go every time. But I'm still learning. I mean, it was only my first book, so mm. I feel like I'm sort of learning on the job. Um, but this, the bad cr stuff, you know, doesn't make it into the final book. Those are the drafts that get thrown away. Oh, yeah. Or edited or something. So. And you have lots of photos at home, right? I have lots of photos, yeah. 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 I and didn't have so many when I wrote this. A lot of these pictures are from collector friends of mine, but... Since then, I've just been sort of obsessed with collecting a whole bunch more. Way too many. It's like, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot that's going to be left on the, on the floor uh, when the second book comes out. Photos that are going to be sad and angry at me. And um, your, ne your next... This book, book will have a sequel uh, next year, uh, hopefully. And, uh, but you also have another series that, that will be... Which it, will, it, will it be published, start being published uh, next year? It's called something like uh, Arcanum? Yeah, it's called Arcanum. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure when it's going to come out yet. Uh, uh, after the second book from his Peregrine. Um, and it's about, uh, it's called Arcanum, and it's about teenagers who uh, live in a, a, a small town in America and discover a, uh, like a cache of magical objects that are very ancient. Sounds great. Cool. <laughs> and there's, there's no photos or anything in it. No focus. Miss Peregrine is the photo series. Oh, I, I won't buy that one. I, I won't focus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to paint them inside your brain. All right, yeah. All right, I'll go for that. Um, and also, you have an, you, you have a, you have, not, you have another book. Uh, uh, it, it was out. Uh, it, the photo it, book. It, the photo book. It was out on Harper Collins, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Talk, talk, talking pictures. Could, could you tell us right. something about that book? So I. Um, it's very different from Miss Peregrine. It's not a novel at all. It's just a. It's like a coffee table book, of uh, of photos that I found that have writing on them. So the people who found the or took the photos or owned the photos wrote on the front or the back. Um, and it, there's no story. It's just pictures, and they're divided into sort of thematic sections like love or war or hard times. Um, and the point is sort of like uh, that I feel like these photos that, that I find have, I don't know what the story is. For all of the photos of Miss Peregrine, they're just orphaned works that I made up stories about. But these, there's a little bit of writing on them and they're, it opens up a window into this lost world that I could otherwise know nothing about. And I think that's pretty cool. And it, a lot of them are like funny and silly and I just like them. You like to fantasize about the origin of these photos or something like that? With the ones in Miss Peregrine, I don't really. No, no. I mean, people ask me a lot if I like ever tried to track down like who are the no. people in the photos or where do they come from, and I never did. I always no. sort of dreaded someone being like, "That's my grandmother, you jerk." <laughs> 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 and plus, if I, if I know the story behind the photos, then it's harder to. There's no mystery. It's harder to imagine a story when, when there's it, already one in place. But when, when, it, when it put it this way, I, I, I think about this uh, movie by, by Tim Burton, Big <coughs> Fish, uh, about... Uh, uh, it's been a while since I've seen that. Oh. It's like a dying guy, yeah, he's telling a dying guy, and, 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 and his fantastic stories about I think, life I think it's something like his nephew is, is very disappointed because he, he thinks that his, uh, his relative has, has, has told him a lot of lies. And in the end, in the end I think the movie is something about... The, it's, not, it's not so important about if things are true or... If, they are false. It's about the beauty in the lies and in the well, in the truth. Also. Yeah. Lies. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the, I think there's some similarities between Big Fish and your your book, uh, the celebration of fantasy about this to be um, just to go into this world and just take it for granted. Hmm. It's been so long since I've seen that movie. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. That sounds familiar though. Um, but uh, you like. But you liked it. But I. 
No? I remember liking it. Yeah, okay. it was a long time ago. <laughs> okay. But I think it's important to know if something's, you know, don't tell lies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we, 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 we will open up for some questions, uh, but I would, I would like to hear you read some, some uh, uh, short uh, uh, a bit from your book. Okay, do we have time? Yeah. Do you guys want to hear me read something? <laughs> I don't have to. We are, we are not in a rush, I can't right? read it in the Swedish. <laughs> I'm always like, I'll say one thing and people will be like... <laughs> it would be very Two letters, you can't pronounce that? <laughs> Okay, so this is um, this is when Jacob first sees uh, Miss Peregrine's house. And this is the international edition, but it's page 78. A vast lunar bog stretched away into the mist from either side of the path, just brown grass and tea-colored water as far as I could see, featureless but for the occasional mound of piled-up stones. It ended abruptly at a forest of skeletal trees, branches spindling up like the tips of wet paintbrushes, and for a while the path became so lost beneath fallen trunks and carpets of ivy that navigating it was a matter of faith. I wondered how, to, how an elderly person like Miss Peregrine would ever be able to negotiate such an obstacle course. She must get deliveries, I thought, though the path looked like it hadn't seen a footprint in months, if not years. I scrambled over a giant trunk, slick with moss, and the path took a sharp turn. The trees parted like a curtain, and suddenly there it was, cloaked in fog, looming atop a weed-choked hill. The house. I understood at once why the boys had refused to come. My grandfather had described it a hundred times, but in his stories the house was always a bright, happy place, big and rambling, yes, but full of light and laughter. What stood before me now was no refuge from monsters, but a monster itself, staring down from its perch on the hill with vacant hunger. Trees burst forth from broken windows, and skins of scabrous vine gnawed at the walls like antibodies attacking a virus, as if nature itself had waged war against it. But the house seemed unkillable, resolutely upright, despite the wrongness of its angles and the jagged teeth of sky visible through sections of collapsed roof. I tried to convince myself that it was possible someone could still live there, run down as it was. Such things weren't un unheard of where I came from. A falling down wreck on the edge of town, curtains permanently drawn, that would turn out to have been home to some ancient recluse who'd been surviving on ramen noodles and toenail clippings since time immemorial but no one realizes it until a property appraiser or an, old, or an overly ambitious censors taker barges in to find the poor soul returning to dust and a lazy boy. People get too old to care for a place. Their family writes them off for one reason or another. It's sad, but it happens. Which meant, like it or not, that I was going to have to knock. I gathered what scrawny courage I had and waded through waist-high weeds to the porch, all broken tile and rotting wood, to peek through a cracked window. All I could make out through smeared glass were the outlines of furniture, so I knocked on the door and stood back to wait in the eerie silence, tracing the shape of Miss Peregrine's letter in my pocket. 